worship this morning. It is the first Sunday in Advent. We started a new church here, and so we're using a little different uh, liturgy today. Uh, it's all printed in the bulletin. Uh, and so if you just follow along there, you will see uh, how we're going to do things today. Uh, it's all fairly familiar, things out of the hymnal and things from a card that we used to hand out from time to time. Um, also, please note that during the communion part of the liturgy toward the end, some of those are sung and they're marked if we're going to sing them. They will be to tunes that you'll recognize. Don't worry about that. Uh, but uh, we will be doing some singing there. We begin with our opening hymn, number 670. Please stand.
Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, it shall come to pass in the later days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the, of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they lean more anymore. O house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Romans. O no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandments are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand, so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immortality and sensuality, not in quarreling or jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand in honor of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Jesus said, But concerning that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of man. For in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one left. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated for our hymn of the day.
for our consideration today is our epistle lesson from Romans chapter 13, where the Apostle Paul tells the Romans and us, the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. This is our text. This fall I've been leading a Bible study on the concept of being woke and how we Christians react to the world around us. Perhaps you've heard that word woke tossed around in our society lately. Being woke is kind of what you'd expect it to be. It's about being awake and alert to what's going on in the world. Of course, what's going on in the world, on in the world is subject to each person's opinion. Most of the people that call themselves woke are referring to seeing all of the oppression and discrimination that's going on. Those people would say that they can see how the system is set up to favor some people and to make it harder for others. Others would just disagree with that assessment. We might all consider ourselves awake and alert, but it doesn't mean we see the world the same way. Our epistle lesson for today is from Paul's letter to the Romans, and it's about being woke. Paul tells the Romans and us, that the hour has come to wake up. The night is gone, the day is at hand. Wake up and take a look and see what's going on. You're running out of time, Paul says. If you don't see things correctly now, you maybe never will. But Paul's idea of being awake is quite, di quite a bit different than the people that you see talking about it in our society. To Paul, the world around us is not very important at all. We don't receive our guidance or our information from them. In some ways, the world around us and the people around us are enemies of the truth. Of course, to Paul, you would also see them as a mission field. And so should we. As Christians, it's not our goal to see the world as our neighbors see it, but rather to encourage them to wake up and see the world as we see it, as God sees it. Honestly, Paul's not even talking about being alert to what's going on in the world. He's talking about the far more important issue of being alert to what's going on in you. So our lesson begins with a summary of the law. Here Paul uses what we might call the second use of the law, the mirror. Like a mirror, the law shows us ourselves. You can look at God's law and see how you're doing, how you match up. Have you kept it? Have you fulfilled the law? Paul says the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. How, how is your love these days? Paul says that loving your neighbor as yourself is the summary of the commandments. And he names some of the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. When you look at that mirror, what do you see in yourself? Do you see a life that's pleasing to God and loving to your neighbor? Do you see how many times you have failed to love your neighbor as yourself? When you look at the mirror of the law, do you see yourself as a sinner? Probably. I know I do. <clears throat> After this examination, Paul tells us to wake up. The purpose of the mirror of the law is not that we would wallow in our sins and feel lost and helpless. The mirror stirs us from our sleep so that we look to the solution to our sinfulness. We cannot keep the law as God would have us do. We cannot achieve the perfection that he requires. We need a Savior. The law points us to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul says, wake up. The time is short. Seek your Savior and turn to him. He's coming. Today's the first Sunday in Advent. On the church calendar, it's the first Sunday of a new church year. But of course, more importantly, it's the first Sunday of a fairly short season in the church year. Advent is less than a month long. It's the time that we 
especially spend time repenting of our sins and recognizing the fact that Jesus came into this world because of our sins. Jesus came to forgive our sins. So wake up. The world is gearing up. People are decorating and buying gifts. There are some Christmas lights up. Of course, there have been for weeks, now months. People are making plans for parties and gatherings and celebrations, and maybe you are too. I know I am. But that's not really what the season is about. Wake up. It's easy to fall into a rut. It's easy to dismiss the law of God and consider it unimportant in your life. The season of Advent is about the coming Savior. When the Savior comes, you don't want him to find you lost in your sins, hopeless and helpless. When the Savior comes, you want him to find you faithful, trusting in him, looking for him. Paul says, put on Christ. That's why he came. He came to fulfill the law. During his time on earth, he kept the law perfectly. From the, the day of his circumcision on the eighth day to his dedication on the 40th day, to his time in the temple and the synagogues as an adult, Jesus kept the law. He loved others more than he loved himself. He loved his people so much that he gave his life as the punishment for our sins. In fact, he took our sinfulness on himself and he died on the cross. And our sins died with him. Jesus removed them from us as far as the east is from the west. And instead of our sinfulness and the punishment that we deserve, he gives us his own righteousness. So wake up. Be woke to the fact that though your sins are like scarlet, Jesus has taken them away and given us instead of his robe of righteousness, which is white as snow. Wake up to the fact that he's coming again as our judge. Know that those who believe in him are covered with his robe and found worthy of eternal life in heaven. Know that he died for you. Know that he died for us all. <clears throat> Time is short. One day Jesus will return to bring all of his people with him to his home. So be awake. The world will do what it does. You take an assessment of yourself. Repent of your sins. And celebrate the gift of a Savior. Amen. In putting together this... Uh, conglomeration of a service, I forgot to put in an offering. The treasurer tells me we still need to take one. So we will receive the offering now. <coughs>
away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with the Holy Spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will so praise you. For you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart. And I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gracious Lord, though we do not know the day or the hour of your Son's appearing, grant that we would always be prepared by sending us faithful pastors and teachers who will boldly proclaim your word of law and gospel to us, that we may be constantly encouraged and built up in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of Jacob, you have established your kingdom as a beacon to call all the nations unto yourself. Teach us to walk in the light of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord of love, visit our homes and defend us from the temptation to walk in the works of darkness, that husbands and wives may love each other and raise their children in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are the authority to whom all temporal authorities must bow. Give wisdom and godly insight to our president, our governor, and all who may administer or judge our laws. Grant peace among the nations that swords may be beaten to plowshares and spears to pruning hooks. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, look with mercy upon the sick. Visit them during these Advent days to comfort them with your saving gospel, if it be your will. Grant healing and peace to John, Arnie, Steve, Emily, Ethan, Brittany, Kristen, Sandy, Danny, Kara. Elaine, Kenny, Madeline, Jane, Herb, Evelyn, Dwight, Daryl, Doug, Leo, Terry, Arlene, Omar, Laverne, Jim, Karen, and the family of Phyllis. And those whom we now, now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Draw us to yourself, O Lord. Gathered around at the holy table. Uh, holy body and precious blood of your Son, in the sacrament of the altar, sustain us in saving faith, that we may eat and drink for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O loving Father, you alone know the day and the hour when our Lord Jesus Christ will come again in glory. Keep us steadfast in the one true faith, that we may ever be ready for his reappearing. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would be me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, has come. We welcome him with thankful hearts. Lo, he who has come is coming. We wait for him with fervent faith. Lo, he comes. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.
sent forth your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Having seen his glory, now we wait for the day of consummation, when he will come again as judge and king.
please stand as we sing together the thanksgiving on the bottom seat. Starting this Wednesday, uh, the, uh, the 30th, uh, we will have our midweek services at 11.30 in the morning and at 7 o'clock in the evening, uh, uh, based on the hymn, uh, Once He Came in Blessing, uh, to prepare our hearts and minds for the celebration of Christmas. Uh, the morning service will be followed uh, by a light lunch. If you'd like to help out with those lunches, there is a sign-up downstairs. Uh, there also is in the bulletin there the Christmas concert coming up on the 10th, which is just a day short of two weeks from now. Um, uh, but if you want to sing in the community choir, their practice starts on Tuesday. Uh, they have three practices, and uh, they'll be ready then to sing in the concert on the 10th. So uh, please uh, mark those dates on your uh, calendar as well. Also, we just received a letter uh, this week from Flower Box about... Uh, poinsettias, and I know there's a sign-up uh, down the lower level um, on that stand where there's 25 sign-ups, just dig through to find the one you want. Or, or, you know, you could just sign every one. That works too. All right. 
Yeah, I think that one's probably on top because it's new. But uh, anyway, uh, and it's, it's a fairly short deadline. So if you want poinsettias, don't sit and think about it for a couple of weeks. Sign up because we've got to get that number back to them, I think, in about a week or so, something like that. I think you can also sign up next Sunday, but after that, it's done. So, all right. And uh, I'm helping out uh, St. Stephen's Bram and St. John's Rush City today who are without a pastor and they couldn't find somebody to come and cover their services this morning. So I'm doing a joint service for the two of them at St. Stephen's. At, uh, it starts at 10.30. What do you think? <laughs> I think they might be waiting for me a little bit, but that's okay. They said they would. They said, we'll just sing hymns until you show up. So we'll see how that goes. So there is no Bible class today, but there is Sunday school. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.